Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday the 11th of January 2021. Uh, welcome back after the break. This is my first day back. I am looking forward to doing some awesome stuff this year, as I'm sure everyone is. Uh, we're going to go through our regular agenda, uh, which is high priority initiatives, other initiatives, and then uh, the parking lot questions, any other business, that kind of stuff. So, kicking us off is upcoming and shipped releases. Who can talk about that? Something I missed last week that happened over the break. Um, Go libp thirteen released um, in December 22nd or something like that. Um, that does include some breaking changes um, technically, but they shouldn't affect people unless you are opening streams directly on the connection. Um, so just to note there, um, but yeah, I think we're rolling that up or there's a PR open to include that in, in JSIPFS. I mean, go IPFS, but yes, that PR is That there. one, yeah. Yes, yes, along with some quick fixes, which are related to that. Yes, status of 0.8 release is, is similar to similar to last week in progress. Uh, there should hopefully be a JS IPFS release later this week uh, that has the IPFS client, the experimental gRPC server, and some fixes for some issues that we're debugging at the moment around a memory leak in the uh, HTTP server, potentially and uh, some problems with um, concurrent connections from the HTTP client. So that is it for upcoming and ship releases. And we can move on to uh, the next item, which is pinning services. On the go side, I think this is just um, landing the MFS pinning which should be happening this week. Yeah, and uh, on the um, GUI side, I believe web UI will uh, wire up everything up to the MFS, <laughs> and then uh, we'll have that uh, commented out and then uh, wire it up when it lands. Uh, I think the uh, Configuration keys are stabilized, so we could assume they are correct, right? Okay. So we yeah, I think I think we're pretty happy with them. Uh, yeah, we'll have to make some comments in in the release notes about the changes for anyone who was using an RC, but yeah, it should yeah. be fine. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if if it lands in RC, that then we'll wire it up. If not, we can comment it out for now and do it later. Um, HTTP client is pull request is up for review. It depends on RC1 now. Once RC2 is released, I'll update it to point to RC2. Do we want that merging before um, before the Go release? Or... I guess it can't hurt, can it? I don't think it will, like the API should not change. The surface is pretty small of the API. <clears throat> okay. We probably want it before web UI release though, so, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, ideally they're right. If we want the web UI, in the final go IPFS 0.8 release, then we need the HTTP client in beforehand so it can it can make its way there. If anything changes, like if we, you know, it turns out like we made a mistake, that's it's fine because you're just gonna get like an error, right? Of like, ah, oh, this thing isn't supported yet because you're using an older version of Go IPFS, and then we'll update it and then things will work. Okay. Uh, next up is local pinning. Uh, yeah, I think things are things are pretty solid there. Um, and the only thing, 
Currently is we want to do some testing on uh, evaluating like how long it takes to do a migration with lots of, if you already have lots of pins in your data store. Um, it shouldn't be that big a deal, um, but we'd like to be able to set expectations with the 0.8 release as to how long this is going to take if in fact you have a lot of pins. That information will be available. I should have that finished today. Just going through and producing it so they, they can graph and look at and see what the expected behavior is. That way, if we have anything that's way outside of what that what that uh, curve looks like, we can see there's something maybe on their site that's wrong. Is there a particular place that we should publish that information for users consumption at this point, or do we want to just keep that internally for this point? I mean, I think once we have stuff and and if it looks if it looks like what we're seeing uh, internally, then then we're good, and we'll just like make that we'll just add it to the O.8 release notes GitHub issue. All right. Um, but yeah, we'll just make sure everything like checks out internally first. Cool. Next up is the data transfer speed improvement. Uh, Hannah and Alex are still out, so uh, nothing there. Although, yeah, I have something related to data transfer, but we will do that at the end. Neato. Uh, JS improves discoverability and connectivity. Yeah, so in the, in the rendezvous side of things, the two biggest updates from last week are that the client code is now ready to review in the LibPTP core PR. Uh, I also created a benchmarking setup. I'm just uh, finishing uh, some things about it and, uh, and creating some docs so that tomorrow I can start benchmarking the server itself. Uh, and so yeah, for this week, I want to finish the benchmarking and start working on the examples and production guides. And it would be great if I could get a review for the server this week. And that's it. Next up is bi-directional streaming and streaming areas in the browser. Um, so this got merged just before Christmas uh, and it will go out in the next JS IPFS release along with a blog post explaining the new shiny and the fun things people can do with it. Um, next is JavaScript DHT, it's no update there, um, which is it. The end of the high priority initiatives. So the next section is other initiatives. Uh, first thing is TypeScript integration. Hey. Um, so we changed uh, some stuff in the um, TypeScript config uh, in Asia. So I'm updating some of the PRs that were already done. Um, and also there's a new PR for the IPFS utils. And there's a fix for the CID type setup which was basically breaking the liquid p types. So hopefully that all gets merged um, soon so we can get on with features instead of types. And yeah, that's it. Next item is Badger 2 support, which I think is about to just get renamed. Yes, there it Badger two will uh, the latest release will then be Badger three, and the Badger team has said they don't really have much interest in doing anything other than maintaining like anything anything that is non critical fixes to a version of Badger that is not supported by DGraph. So uh, it seems like there's no particularly good reason why IPFS if it's not using Badger. Uh, to now should continue, should use it at all and should just switch to Badger and just go straight to Badger 3. Um, we'll probably need to support both for a little while in terms of like letting people test out the stabi stability of Badger 3 and see if they're happy with that. Uh, and we also need to set up a system for uh, having multiple versions of data stores that are the Badger data store. Uh, Having a single repository for each version, for each major version, seems like a bad idea. 
which is what we currently do. Um, if you are interested in that, uh, I guess follow the uh, Go DS Badger repo, where some discussions will be happening. Is it, are those discussions purely in the issues, or is there a channel that would that we also want to discuss on? Uh, yeah, I, my current plan, I was just going to like get some, some brief, like survey, some brief thoughts from people and then put up an issue and then, and then do it there on, on the GitHub issue. Um, right. if it, if it starts, like, it seems like it's getting more complicated, then we'll schedule a meeting to talk about it. All right. Not traversal is the next item on the list. Uh, Arsh is back. He is working on things. Um, he's, uh, yeah, he's talking with Stephen, I think, today about um, some of the multi stream issues. And um, we're going to try and do some strategizing on what is like the simplest way to get at least some of the not traversal stuff done so that we have something soon. Cool. Uh, next up, Unix Plus V1.5 in GuidePFS. Doesn't look like there's been any update on that ticket. Issue hasn't really had any comments on it since the beginning of December, so it's gone cold. Um, GuidePFS GC improvements is the next thing. All right, um, still working toward uh, seeing what we need to do for performance improvements uh, as far as DAG awareness. It looks like it will actually work without being DAG aware. So that's a, that's good news. And just need to assess, uh, are there any major performance impacts depending on how we delete blocks within that DAG? Because that, uh, if it doesn't, it still might make sense we need to be DAG aware just because of performance, but it doesn't appear to actually break anything catastrophically, which is the good news. So that's, that's the only update right now, but that, that work is continuing. Final item on the list is GuyPFS migrations rework. Yes, last uh, last week I finished all of the uh, modifications to the distributions, uh, site scripting, and all that. So uh, it should all be reviewable this week. There is a chunk of stuff to review, and it's not as high priority as other things. So it may not we may not get to it right away, but uh, we'll have everything ready to go certainly for the next uh, next release. And if we need to backport it, we could uh, for this release, but um, at least this would, you know, this would be, able, if worst case is this will be the last release where we have to go forward with the gigantic migration. So uh, we're good there. Just, uh, just a matter of review. Great stuff. Uh, that is it for the other initiatives. Um, so the next section is design review proposals, uh, which is empty. Yeah. Does anybody so have I've got, Yeah, I've got something. Uh, so as I have mentioned previously, um, put a little bit of thought into, uh, into this issue around um, BitSwap has a maximum block size. Uh, the maximum block size uh, is frustrating if you have some already content address data and the blocks are bigger than one megabyte, right? You're importing Git blocks and some of the Git blocks are bigger than one megabyte. So now what do you do? Can't use BitSwap, so what's the plan? Um, so the, that proposal um, is one way to go about solving that. Um, there is a second proposal, which is related to it, which says, hey, well, if you can already do, uh, if you can handle transferring very large blocks, uh, what if you just decided that all files were just single, very large blocks, um, which would give you the ability to have like a canonical hash. So it doesn't matter how anyone chunks it, you get the same hash. Uh, and also would allow people to like just grab like 
hey, I found the SHA-256 system ISL on GitHub and then be like, hey, is it an IPFS? And maybe find it. Um, needs reviews, needs some thoughts. It's like a pretty different way of thinking about things. And so it may be that this is a bad idea. Um, <laughs> if it is a bad idea, then <laughs> please say your comments so that we don't do something bad. If you or your friends have some cryptanalysis expertise, then want to verify that my strategy for dealing with SHA-1 and SHA-2 is smart, then uh, would also be appreciated. Also learned some interesting things about how uh, Blake 3 and Kangaroo 12 could be like super useful to us um, in the future because they are tree-based hashes and we do trees with hashes. So could be like super useful. Check out the PR. Uh, next up is blockers and asks. Um, looks like Lido's got something. Yeah, uh, just a quick shout out. Um, if you have some spare time, install Brave Beta or Nightly. As long as it's 1.19, it will have sub, like built-in support for our URIs, IPNS and IPFS console slash. So uh, just play with it. Uh, I'm not saying anything specific because it's useful to have feedback from people who don't have any expectations. Just if anything look weird or does not behave how you would expect it, send feedback my way, either DM me or Fill an issue on in IPFS in web browsers repo, uh, and I'll try to consolidate that feedback. Uh, we'll try to. Uh, I don't expect big changes for the initial release when this initial support lands in Brave stable, but we will be iterating on that. So for now, we want to push this basic support uh, for resolving those URIs. So that's the goal. So people can resolve those URIs uh, either by public gateways or uh, local gateway, uh, local IPFS node managed by Brave. Uh, but any feedback is welcome. So uh, just let me know. And I just wanted to note that uh, there's an IPFS community security meetup on uh, Wednesday. This came out of um, the set of GitHub issues around themes for 2021, one of which being uh, privacy and security and a bunch of community uh, groups building on IPFS expressed interest in various forms of what that might mean. Um, so we're going to have them all show up and do five minute things on either what they've done in regards to their understanding of privacy and security on IPFS or what requirements they want. Um, and then have hopefully a, I don't know, I'm aiming for like half an hour discussion of you know what ends up coming out as themes of most important privacy and security work from there um, to keep external groups involved. Having people who are here also on the same page as that, maybe by watching it either live or afterwards or participating would be great. Uh, I have a ask for Alex. Uh, Alex, if you'll have a chance to look at the pub sub issue, I'll put a note and share your opinion would be helpful. I propose specific uh, changes to the PubSub API. We have a JS IPFS, and it would be good to know if you're like them or not. Okay, I will look at that and respond. Thanks. If that is it for the blockers and asks, uh, we move on to questions. Who's got a question? Okay, parking lot, anything that does not fit elsewhere? Um, I guess this is not super important. I've been working on cleaning up the uh, IPFS counter uh, slash DHT measurement side code uh, yet again. Um, so going from, I, I, I merged the counter and uh, Adin's DHT graph thing. Um, if there's anyone who wants to be tagged on PRs beyond a Dean. 
uh, on that, let me know. I guess a, a fun just bug I ran into with the with the crawler that I have a, a PR I have to put up a PR to fix is uh, multi hat multi adders are fun uh, and by fun I mean somewhat confusing um, because sometimes they end in slash p 2 p slash some peer ID and sometimes they don't uh, and gilded p 2 p expects them to not end in that because the peer ID will come separately as part of a adder info object. Uh, if you aren't careful about this, you'll end up with peers that are undialable or that seem undialable, even though you have their addresses because those addresses don't seem valid. So that, uh, yeah, got, got to be careful if you're working with multi Do we think that's a bug and go. that like the address is too specific and in fact is like it's so fully self-verifying? I, I suspect that there is some, there is certainly a bug. Uh, is the bug the fact that the older version of IPFS was putting them, was putting the, you know, the slash P to P's at the end in the DHT somewhere and other ones were not? and we're all playing in the same space and that's causing problems? Sure. Uh, and so we could have like a more uniform DHT and that, that would fix things. Also, we should probably be more lenient and or more careful when, when working with multi adders Just like if you're doing it on your own, just as a thing to, to heads up for, and maybe we'll put some fixes to make more things more lenient. If there's nothing else, then I think we're done. Thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, this has been the IPFS Confrontations Weekly Sync for Monday, the 11th of January, 2021. Uh, please fill in your async updates so people know what's going on, because it's really useful. Uh, and we'll see you all next week. Have a, have a fab week, everyone. Bye.